Well, hey there, happy day 995 of What's Shift to Now. Sharon Hornelson here, sharing my adventures as I go from the offline brick and mortar world, corporate America, over a quarter century in corporate America, to the online world. And over four decades of businesses, ownership, running different types of businesses, um, starting, growing, being involved in different industries and businesses. Now, I'm very straight faced, my straight faced personality, and I don't. I guess I'm pretty serious. I've been pretty serious most of my life. And today, the Get Up and Go Challenge was day 19, day 19 of our 30-day Get Up and Go Challenge. And we talked about A in our SOAP framework. The A in our SOAP framework, of course, stands for action. And there goes my magnifying glass again. I drop my magnifying glasses so much. It's, it's amazing any of them have backs on them. Actually, I would say over half of them are missing the battery cover. So... I need to be more careful with dropping them. So AF stands for as F, the four letter F word that we're all familiar with. And I didn't know that. I remember, I might have shared this story on this particular segment before, but I didn't know what it meant. And it was popping up everywhere online. It's probably been a year ago now. I don't, I don't remember how long ago it's been, but I remember all of a sudden people were using it all over the place. And I'm like, all right, I don't know what half the acronyms people use are. Why don't I just ask one of the kids who weren't around or, and didn't answer their phones or just Google it? So I Google it. And of course, to my amazement, I found it. It stands for as F. And I'm like, all right, well, now I know what it means, but I'm probably not going to use it. And lo and behold, I use it today on <laughs> the Get Up and Go Challenge because we're uh, talking about the action area. And the area I picked of the seven main areas and aspects of our life are is the financial area. So... A for action, F for financial. But I'm sure most people that see that will think as, I'm saying as, you know what, just like I did in this headline, which I'm of course not, because I don't know, I don't think I've ever said that out loud. I don't know that I've even ever written it, uh, except for today's video. Um, it just, it, it's not very me, right? As Pajama Grandma for the last two and a half years up till this year, probably not something that grandma's going to say, at least not this grandma. So today was all about financial and actions. And one of my favorite tools, share one of my very favorite all-time tools, because my dad taught it to my sisters and I when we were little girls. And it is just the plus or minus exercise where you look at the decision in front of you or the options or the alternatives, and you, you rate them pros and cons, plus and minus. What, what are the positive things and reasons to do this? What are the negative things and aspects and consequences of doing this thing? And to this day, it's one of my favorite things because it helps me make decisions almost automatically and, and without a lot of conscious thought. I, Whenever I'm faced with a challenge or an option or a choice or a decision to make, the first thing I think about is plus and minus, pros and cons. What are the pros and cons of this particular situation? And then if it's a so it's a more complicated situation and there's more um, criteria that need to be considered for a particular solution and for that situation. Then I'll go into a more complicated problem solving tool. But 90 plus percent of the time, a decision can be made and a very good decision, if not the best decision on the planet, a really good decision and to get moving quicker can be made just by using the plus or minus strategy, the plus or minus um, way of making decisions and, and, and decision-making process. I call it a decision-making process. I don't know if it is, but to me it is because I use it to make decisions. I use it to make choices. I use it to increase my odds of making a better choice for me because it's always about what's the best choice and what's the best direction and the best decision for you. It doesn't matter what's the best for anybody else. What matters is what's the best choice and the best option for you. So financial going to use the plus and minus on three things we came up with yesterday on our list of 10 possible options of things we could do to get us from where we are to where we want to be in whatever area or aspect of your life you're working on. I'm demonstrating it through financial. Last time I did it through a physical, um, fit something physical, something about our physical life. And I think I'll probably do another detailed breakdown with relationships. Those seem to be the big three areas for people, financial, physical, and relationships because they're so intertwined and they're so foundational to the rest of our existence and the rest of our being. They definitely impact our mental health. They impact our emotional health. They impact everything. So I like to go in detail on those big three and then just spend like one day going through the whole framework for the mental, for the emotional, for the spiritual, and for the contribution because those, uh, those areas are ones we deal with 
interconnectedly, but also um, spiritual and contribution we tend to deal with after we've taken care of our basic needs of, you know, our physical well-being, our financial well-being, and our relationships. And once we've, we've knocked those out or we've got those in a situation where we feel like they're under control and they're serving us, then we move on to the higher level um, concerns and areas of our, our life and our existence. I know uh, when I was younger, I paid absolutely zero attention to my mental and my emotional well-being. I just none. And, and younger spiritual well-being was pretty much taken care of through uh, religion and, for, and influences of my parents. And it wasn't until later in life that I decided, hey, I'm a grown-up. I can choose to study and explore and believe what I want to believe. And so that was, you know, much later in life that I discovered my spiritual and my contribution type nature. Although I've always wanted to contribute and give back and do things in society. I've been um, doing stuff for a long time. And, and you know what? It's none of people's business. What, what I do and who I contribute to and who I share with and what I contribute is it's really nobody's business because I'm not looking for pats on the back. I remember being in a network marketing company. I've been in, in two or three network marketing companies in my life, been around a long time. Pretty much everybody that's get to be a certain age will have been involved in a network marketing company at some time. So in one of my network marketing companies, it was, you know, the early days of social media. And every time one of the leaders in the organization would do something or contribute or do something nice for, for their parents or something, they would put a big post up about it and brag about it. And to me, I, it made me sick to my stomach because it felt so inauthentic. Yeah, you should do nice things for your mom, but you don't need to tell everybody about it. I guess that's that's maybe me thinking you don't need to always blow your own horn. Sometimes you just do something and let it speak for itself, and you don't need to tell everybody what a wonderful person you are. So I keep all that stuff to myself. It's nobody's business, you know, and I've, I've been involved in stuff for a long, long time. Anyway, uh... Fun challenge today was by Mae West, and I'm, I'm laughing because I'm thinking as I'm reading it today with my magnifying glass that's now on the floor, uh, how many kids six to nine years old have any idea who Mae West was? I'm 60, and I vaguely know who Mae West was, so I think it's funny that, that in a six to nine year old, supposedly that's who the audience is for this particular journal, is uh, a quote from Mae West. I guess there's other people in there too that they might not have heard of, but there's a lot of them in there that I'm old enough that I have never heard of. So I thought it was funny to see Mae West, a quote from her today about your personality being the glitter. And so we're, we're looking for the glittery part of our personalities today for the fun challenge. So that's it. Challenges I'm working on, other projects and things I'm doing. I'm starting a new planning system, trying to see if it's something that works for me. I, I always explore other people's systems. Not always, but I like to explore other people's systems because, like, there's a gazillion of them out there now. Couldn't possibly explore everybody's. But when I feel drawn to something, then I follow that and I and I look into it. One was a planning system that I am I'm looking into. It's different than a lot of the planning systems I've ever experienced before, and I've experienced a lot of them. So I thought, well, this sounds different. It looks different. It does some of the things that I'm already doing in my life in separate books and journals, you know, not unlike the get up and go channel. I've got a journal for everything, right? I've got my gratitude journal. I've got my, my, this is my get up and go journal. I've got all kinds of journals all over the place. I got a flip book somewhere over there. I've got a flip book where it's another type of journal that I do for personal development. So I, I it puts several of those all in one place. Like it puts the gratitude journal. It puts the, your schedule, your to-do list, all the things you're working on in one place. And I, I am attracted to the simplicity of that. And I like the simplicity of that going forward. So I'm going to try it out for a few months, see if it works for me, tweak it. Cause I guarantee I'll tweak it. I tweak everything. I'm one of those people that can't leave well enough alone. It's like cooking with recipes. I don't cook with recipes. I haven't used a recipe for well over a decade. The only recipe I used to use was around Christmas time, Christmas cookies. I, I would use a couple recipes and I always made my favorites. So pretty soon I memorized the recipe. So I didn't use recipes anymore. I just knew what and, and what proportions to put things together to create what I wanted to create. Now, does all my stuff always turn out? No, absolutely not. But does it mostly? And do I learn every time I make a mistake and forget something or do something wrong? Absolutely. Which makes me a better and better and better cook. It makes me a, a better master baker and, th you know, I, it helps me to master the skills that I'm trying to achieve. 
Um, so even recipes, I can't leave them alone. I always had to tweak them and make them my own. So same is true with, with everything else in life. If I'm looking at somebody else's system or, or way of doing something, there's always a way to improve it for me or make it more customized for me. Just like everything I teach people. I'm like, all right, this is what I've learned from my experience, but you need to say, does that work for me? Does that fit with my experience? Will, does that make sense? Does that resonate with me or feel right to me? Or is it something that I should just say, mm, glad it worked for you, but I'm not even going to do that. I'm not going to try that. Um, there's lots of strategies and things that people teach us and other people that work for them that are absolutely positively not right for us. I learned that in different businesses. I've been involved in so many different businesses and some of them for me, great businesses, people made millions and millions and millions of dollars on them. But for me, they were absolutely soul sucking. And so that means they're a great business, but they're not a great business for me. And that's what matters. So that's our get up and go, not our get up and go challenge for today. Oh my goodness. That is my quick synopsis of what I'm working on today. Have an absolutely fantastic day. I'm going to go drink a little coffee and uh, get into my day. I wish you an awesome day. Questions? Anything I can help you with? Any resources or people you might think that you need to be connected with or that you're any challenge you're having or thing that you're struggling with and you don't have anyone to ask? Ask in the comments below. Just hit me up. And again, if I don't know the answer, which come on, none of us know it, all the answers to everything. I don't know a lot, but I do know how to find the answers. And I think that's if you can develop a skill that you will use your entire life, it's not to know everything or to even want to know everything, just to be willing to ask the questions and go search for the answers. Be curious, All right? Have an awesome day. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.